Hickok 45 here with the rifle musket I carried in 1863. Yep, you've seen it before. It is an infield. This is a two band infield. And uh, I think sometimes referred to as the naval model, or at least the, there was a naval model in this configuration. Might have had some other uh, attachments, don't know. But it was used in the Civil War and uh, not extensively like the three band model. Uh, but it was it was used uh, you know, to some extent. I've read and I've read arguments on both sides of that. But it's a really handy length, and uh, it is 58 caliber. Need I tell you, ready for a 58 caliber mini ball, which is currently resting right there over some powder. All it's asking for is what? You're right, some fire. All right, so let's put some fire on it. <laughs> And shoot it. You want to? This is an anniversary. Yeah, I should have baked a cake. I've had this now 25 years. Can you believe that? 25 years since I bought this. I, I was just kidding about having used it in the Civil War, for those of you who fell for that. All right, so let's start since it's October, as you're looking, or no, as I'm doing this. It may not be October as you're looking at it, but it's October today. So I thought I might start with a pumpkin. And then I noticed there's a two liter kind of behind it. What do you think? I ought to try to get both. <laughs> Except I can't really see the two liter. But I'm gonna try. Uh... <laughs> uh, maybe I'll we'll try again. At least I hit the pumpkin. Yeah, at least I wasn't so dumb that I missed the pumpkin or such a bad shot. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, this is a neat. Uh, this is a replica. That was that was again. I was joking. I'm sorry. So many of you went to Google very very quickly just to see which side I fought on. Right? You're asking your grandparents if I knew anything about Hickok 45 fighting in the Civil War, but it was a joke. You wasted your time. So uh, yeah, this is the this is the two band. Yeah, you've seen it before. We've done two or three videos with it. But, uh, oh man, 25 years gives me an excuse to get it out again. Can't, can't, can't hate that, can you? And, uh, you know, you've probably seen me, we actually did a woods walk, come think of it. And I use these uh, cartridges, I think it's the 1855 infield cartridge design, uh, made by, okay, another YouTuber, Plowboy's Ghost. Yeah, made these for me. I saw he made them, that he makes them. On YouTube, I talked him into making me some. I don't think he's in the business, but I talked him into it uh, several years ago. And I still have some left. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I'd use a couple of these. Okay, you rip them off. This is what, I know uh, you, you see me and maybe a lot of other people, you know, shooting muzzle loaders, and we're measuring powder and all that, and going through the, you know, putting in many balls like that, and which, but uh, which is what I do at the range generally. But the you know, cartridges were what was used by the military, of course, and and other folks too. Paper cartridges, you know, that way you get a pre-measured uh, amount of powder, the correct amount, and your balls in there, and it's lubed and it's ready to go. So it does save some time, you're right? Especially if you're in battle. So I'm gonna use a couple of them today, even though I'm not in battle. All right, at least I hope I'm not, other than against these fine pumpkins. Yeah, I'll get this thing loaded up, one of their support. All right, we're ready to shoot it again. Cock the hammer, half cock, put on a cap. And you know what, I, I'm tempted to try that again. I think I will. Will I bother you if I do? Uh, okay, I'm going to try that again. Got him! All right, see? Pays not to give up. Pays not to give up. <laughs> yeah, will I bother you? See, I'm so considerate, I don't want to bother you all. <laughs> now this, uh, the ones that the Plowboy's Ghost makes are, uh, it's a Pritchard bullet. In fact, I am such a, oh considerate person. I've got these out. This is what's in the cartridges, the Pritchett bullet, that's smooth, right? And this is generally what I'm firing, just a regular mini ball, right? This is more of a, I guess the Pritchett bullet used more so by the English to load these these cartridges, at least at that time. And, uh, you yeah, know, good, good rounds, good rounds. So, uh, and I had, that one had a fair amount of kick to it more than what I thought I'd been shooting. 
I don't guess that I put a do I put two charges in there. I might have done that. Did you all watch me? I might have done that. If I did, that's okay. I might have uh, measured out 60 grains with this, and then I then I decided to load one of these instead of one of these. I, I don't know. I'll look at the video. You all already know because you were paying attention, right? But it did seem to have more recoil. The thing about black powder is, nah, there's a limit. You don't, you don't want to load a 200 grain round, you know, 300 grains. But generally, unfired powder just blows out the barrel. And, uh, you know, I know with hunting rounds like this, you'll see people talking about shooting. Ah, I usually shoot 60 round grains of black powder or 50 grains but if i'm hunting i shoot 100 or 120 you know so there's wider much wider range of for black powder different pressure curves and all that kind of thing and uh that's why you're able to shoot black powder cartridges in old colts made in 1873 or 1880 okay without you know damaging them whereas you don't want to shoot modern powder and if you don't shoot modern powder in one of these modern powder is just different a different pressure curve. I mean, you could put even a couple of grains of extra powder, something like bullseye or some low low volume powder. You can blow up your gun with modern powder. Okay, so just a little less than on that. All right, so black powder is far different. If that's what I did, I, I don't think I did. I might have. Okay, so yeah, 25 years, and uh, it's it's great to still have this firearm and shooting well. Uh, it, it, does, it did need a higher front sight. You see, I, I did what every good gunsmith does. I took some JB Weld and I made an extension for my front sight and then I put a little paint on it. <laughs> yeah, isn't that what all gunsmiths do? If, they, if they're gonna, you know, give you a higher front sight, I may sometime have that done, fixed. But uh, yeah, she's pretty well. I need to shoot it more. I haven't shot it much lately. And so I have good excuse for missing. So let's, uh, let's go back to my loads and not mix them up, if that's what I did. All right, it's just I just may have had it my shoulder differently, and it felt like it, it kicked more than it should have. All right, good old. I'm shooting about 65 grains of powder here. I think 60, uh, yeah, 65 grains basically. I think the uh, military loads back in during the Civil War was about 60 grains. And I put one of these babies in here. It's all lubed up. Been lubed up a long time. Kind of. Gross looking, isn't it? Uh, even going down in there. I mean, these are called mini balls. Actually, Manet, they're named after Manet, who, a Frenchman who invented them. And I've told you all this many times, but some of you are slow learners like me, right? No, you just missed all those great lessons. Uh, so whether you're fast or slow, you just didn't hear it. But uh, in the old days, uh, you know, loading a ball and a smooth bore was was quicker because uh, you, know, you had to you didn't have to use the patch, you didn't have rifling and all that sort of thing. I've discussed in flintlock videos and everything. Uh, what what changed the game was a bullet like this. You can see it on this one with that skirt. So it goes down even with you when you have rifling. It goes down easier because it doesn't have to be as tight because it expands as the the pressure and the powder burning you know launches it so it expands into the rifling so you still get the twist so you get good contact with the rifling which is what you have to have to get accuracy without having to hammer it and pound it down into there being so tight okay so a round ball obviously wouldn't have that flexibility all right so and here i am talking to you again let me make sure we're yeah one thing i try to do yeah my markers there is even if I forget what I'm doing or I lose track of what I'm doing, and many, many of you, if you shoot muzzle loaders, you've done this. You've uh, dry balled the gun or forgot because you're talking with your buddy or something. But one thing I try to religiously do is once I get that ball in there, I make sure I do the short starter and then the, grab the long one and I get it all the way down. Okay, Because you, if you're going to make a mistake and forget where you were or shoot when you don't have it loaded or whatever the situation might be when you're not loaded properly or whatever could happen you definitely don't want to put a cap on and fire you got powder in and you got the ball just pushed down like to there that, that would make it a kind of a pipe bomb that's the thing you really want to guard against one of the most important things is to have that ball or that mini ball whatever down against the powder all right okay enough education have we hit the gong yet We've not, have we? Some of you are waiting for it, okay? 
Well, if I miss it, you'll still be waiting, right? I think if I hold on the top, I might hit it. All right, <laughs> that's what I want to hear. 58 caliber chunk of lead hitting the gong. It, it is a sweet sound, no doubt about it. It is a sweet sound. And I'm using, still got some go -X, uh, and uh, you know, firing that a lot. So eventually I run out of go -X. I I know the factory shut down. I don't think anybody bought it, did they? And reopened it? I don't know. It's been a while since all that happened, but I had kind of stocked up, so I'm good for now. But there's other black powder around. All right, this is fun. Uh, I've told the story in 97 had a burglary back before cameras and and alarms and pit bulls and all that kind of stuff and uh, lost my Hawken muzzleloader which is really the only kind of muzzleloader I had had up to that point and and since I lost it and I needed to replace my muzzleloader I thought you know what I might just replace it with something different and I did. I got to looking at uh, rifles like this, Civil War rifles. Thought it might be interesting. And, uh, and it, it really, it had, it was, I guess, a blessing in disguise in a lot of ways because I really enjoy these. And as you know, if you've been around a while, I've really kind of gotten into these, these military muskets, rifle muskets and everything, and thoroughly enjoy them. I still like the Hawking too. I like everything, don't I? Well... To celebrate properly on a 25th anniversary, there's got to be some pot smoking, right, involved. <laughs> well, we got all kinds of smoke. We got the white smoke from the black powder, the pot smoke, and then a really dusty ground. You know why the ground is so dusty? Yeah, it ain't rained in weeks, so that will do it every time, won't it? Let's shoot another one of these babies. Now, don't let me put more powder in than I want to. Okay, so again, you tear it off, bite it off, whatever you want to do. Pour in the powder. You can see how the advantage there. And you put the ball in. Again, that's the Pritchett ball. Aim it down. And you notice I grab my ramrod. I try to remember to do that. As soon as I lay the, or before, I lay down that ball starter and I'm ready to go. So I know that lead is down on top of the powder very important very important oh yeah maybe we ought to try a buffalo all right i'm a little little doubtful about my elevation though i got to moving the sights around before we started just because i was i was shooting too low and i, I don't remember I just don't remember where that sight should be. I mean, I'll take a picture of that today if that turns out where it should be. All right, let's try Mr. Buffalo. Now you tell me if I go high or low or both. <laughs> That's a good feeling. That means I could eat if I was living in the old west, right? Or wouldn't have, to, well, west is relative. Kentucky used to have a lot of buffalo, Tennessee. So west is west, depending on what year you're talking about. So uh, th that is cool. If you have not shot muzzle loaders yet, uh, again, the only reason I brought this out for the anniversary was to uh, just harass you all again, because there's some of you out there who have not fired a muzzle loader. You don't even own a muzzle loader, you know? I mean, what is wrong with you? What is wrong? What are you waiting for? Look at those pretty mini balls. Aren't they gorgeous? And you might wonder why I don't, I'm not pulling from that. Uh, those are fine. Those are, uh, I forget the size. I've got the, the numbers. They're just slightly bigger. I might try one on this load. In fact, some, some muzzle loaders, uh, in fact, the infield tends to take a, a larger, or can take a larger diameter ball, I believe I discovered, especially my original infield. And I'm not so sure about this one. But, uh, and you know, it also depends when you're doing all this. If you're, as your muzzle gets dirtier and dirtier, uh, sometimes a, a bigger ball or mini ball is harder to get down and you might go to smaller one. And if you're using a patch ball, sometimes you, 
you want a thinner patch, you know, just whatever keeps you going. Now, if you are shooting in competition, see, those go down fine. You're shooting in competition, like a friendship or something, uh, really tough competition with a muzzle loader then. Uh, I think most of those folks really uh, shoot a tightly patched ball or whatever it is they're shooting and they really have to work to learn sometimes. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> I'm not interested in working too hard. But you know what? I think on the anniversary it also deserves to take out a bowling pin, don't you? Like that one sitting right there, making fun of me. <laughs> Look at it spin. Yeah, 58 caliber does it every time. I won't shoot it too much. I, I just wanted you to be here uh, for the celebration. It's just important to me that you're here. And I, I'll blow it one more time, maybe. We'll let you get out of here. Uh, we may shoot it another thousand times. So don't get mad at me just because you miss it, okay? So what can I tell you about it? You know, you know, I'll link to some of the earlier videos on this rifle. Maybe even on the original infield I have. It's a three band model. Uh, this is a great length, a great size though. This naval size, whatever. Uh, and you know, it's kind of was the trend when all militaries realized that uh, a lot of the, the rifles, military rifles, didn't need to be as long as they were. But now there's also some advantages to that. Let's shoot another one of those. Uh, the, uh, you know, if you're in hand-to-hand -hand combat a lot, I guess that considered hand-to-hand, -hand, you got a bayonet on your rifle. At least with a big, long three-band rifle, you'd have a long toad sticker, wouldn't you? And uh, it'd be hard for anybody to get close to you, except with their big, long toad sticker. So you would not want a shorter toad sticker than, they, <laughs> than the enemy has, maybe. Uh, I wouldn't want to be out there with a toad sticker, I tell you. All right. If I just shoot one more time, what is it you would like me to shoot? Uh, this pumpkin again? <laughs> oh boy, this thing is fun, I tell you. I'm tempted to shoot that, that pumpkin again, but... Uh, Oh, I know what. There's a cinder block down there. Whoa, almost forgot. Let's put one on him. Mr. Cinder Block. Perfect. Perfect to wrap up on. Now, what if I miss it? I think I forgot to put my ears in a couple of times. This big old boar doesn't really hurt you too much. All right. Did I hit it? I think I did. Yes. A lot of lead going down range. So uh, maybe I should just put this on my shoulder. I do have a strap. But uh, again, Enfield, this, this was a common review. I've talked about this in a lot of videos. The, uh, the Enfield, uh, when the war was declared, you know, the South started scrambling immediately for, for rifles, muskets, firearms. And uh, they sent, was it Caleb Hughes? I can't believe I remember the name. Went to England and started contracting with everybody who could, buying up the firearms. And so the South ended up with a lot of infield rifles. Most of them were the three band. They ended up with a lot of infield rifles because of that. And uh, they didn't have the production capacity in the South anyway. So I guess it was a good thing they did that. They'd been defeated even sooner probably. Uh, and. Uh, so a lot of a lot of southern soldiers carried the and some northern soldiers they were very very desirable the infield in some ways more so than the springfield but they were both fine rifles and then of course you had people uh you know picking up either one on the battlefield and both were 58 caliber and so you know everybody was pretty much geared up i guess to shoot either one and so there was a lot of mixing and matching, you know, and, and there were many other rifles and muskets and flintlock, uh, smooth bores used uh, as well, especially early in the, the war. But this was a very, very common rifle, the Enfield. And uh, I'm just glad to have one and have had it this long and have been able to enjoy it for 25 years. Uh, it, it, that was long before you all even started showing up on the range. I don't know where you were all those years, but you weren't here 
and I uh, kind of missed you. I really did. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastall. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastall for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to Ballastall.com, TalonGunGrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.